Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we're going to be profiling for you a deck that I honestly never thought I'd be profiling or even building in my wildest dreams, I guess you could say 10 years ago, 7, 8 years ago, but I decided to build it because it's actually a fun deck, and it's based off one of my, my pretty much only really favorite character from GX, and that was Zane, even though he went crazy there for a bit, and that is Cyberdarks. So... The deck has gotten a lot of new support recently. You have a new field spell, you have two dragon cyber darks that work with the old cyber darks beautifully. You can utilize your extra deck in a way that I honestly have not seen other decks really, really use. Um, so you will be using the extra deck through monster effects, which is kind of interesting. I'll explain that. Um, the deck overall functions very well. It functions sort of like early Cosmo when I used to play it back in the day, when Cosmos first came out. It kind of functions like that because things tend to float. Things tend, if you get your setup right, tend to be untargetable. Overall, it works out fairly well. Um, you may be asking, does this deck rely on link monsters? Not really. You don't really need link monsters at the moment in this deck. It's not necessary. I found that it was more of a pain in the butt to get Link Monsters out than just focusing on pretty much your fusions and some of your synchro plays you could make with the deck. If you played your cards right, you'd be perfectly fine. Uh, you could use your one extra monster zone. And for the main part, like you're just having these big ships if you consider this, if you think in this deck as like an early Cosmo deck, these are like your big ships with big attacks that are untargetable, and then you can make your extra deck monsters very easily. So that's how the deck pretty much functions. But without further ado, let's get started. First, we run three Cyber Edge, we run three Cyber Keel, and we run three Cyber Horn. So you pretty much run all the old Cyber Darks. Uh, they all have different effects. The best one I would say is Edge because it can have his attack, but you definitely want to run th three of each of these. Um, it helps you go into your fusions, number one, number two, they just, they can get very beefy and be untargetable overall. So they're like your mini Cosmos, I guess you could say. And I love the fact that these came in dual terminal for the most part, because I've picked up a lot of the dual terminal cards from my friends and uh, ordered them online. So I'm, I'm happy I get to play a dual terminal deck like with that rarity, because I haven't played that since what? Fables, I think it was, like years and years ago when I played Fables for a couple months. But um, yeah, I'm very excited to play this deck. It's really fun. But yeah, you run three of each. Edge pretty much can have his attack. Um, Keel can inflict some damage. And then what does Horn do off the top of my head? I forget. Uh, I think he does piercing. Yeah, he pretty much... Yeah, da, 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 da. Uh, between... During the battle between the attacking card and a defense position monster whose defense is lower than the attack of this card, inflict the difference as battle damage to your opponent. So yeah, it does piercing damage. The, so the best two pretty much are Edge and Horn. Keel is the third, I would say. But yeah, that's just me. They all, you all want to run them. Then we run into the new Cyber Darks here. We have three Cyber Cannon and three Cyber Alright, so let's talk about what these do. Uh, they're very unique. I honestly can't remember in a lot of cards that, especially I think it's with Claw, if I remember correctly, that really work like this. But let me read you Claw's effect. His first effect, you can discard this card, add one Cyber Dark Spell Trap card from your deck to your hand. That's amazing. That literally means you can add Cyber Impact, uh, Cyber Dark Impact, excuse me, or you can add the Field Spell card, which is great. During damage calculation, if a monster equipped with this card battles, you can send one monster from your extra deck to the grave. Claw, by far, is the better one over Cannon, but Cannon is just as good. But Claw helps you use things because you can, doing the battle step, you can send things to the graveyard. So let me show you some things you can send to the graveyard. You can send, send Elder Entity Nistis to the graveyard, pop a card. You can send Predator Plant Chimera Rafflesia to the graveyard, and at the end of the turn, you get a search for a fusion card, pretty much. And you can send Five-Headed God Dragon, so when you go into your bigger fusions over here, you can pretty much equip it with the Five-Headed God Dragon for 5,000 attack. So, 
Yeah, there's a bunch of different things you can do in that department with Claw. Claw is so amazing. He's your setup play. He can be a double searcher, with, and he can just do so much because you can send the Nistis to the graveyard, pop a card. It's amazing. Nistis is a three of in this deck, by the way, if you guys are wondering. This, uh, for Cannon, you can discard this card, add one Machine Cyber Dark Monster from your deck to your hand, which is nice because you can add, if you don't have a Cyber Dark in hand, you can just add one, which is sort of nice. Doing damage calculation, if a monster equipped with this card battles, you can send one monster from your deck to the graveyard. So it is, for the most part, like a foolish burial, and it can set up for your fusions. So you can maybe, if you have overload fusion in your hand or whatnot, you can set up for an overload fusion play. So overall, they're both really good, and I think even though Claw is better, you definitely want to run three cannon. I've seen people run two cannon because they don't like it, but for me, from playing the deck, you want to run three of each from testing. Next, I run, and this is a good tech I like, two Black Salvo. Black Salvo is a kind of cool card in the deck. I've seen different people run different variations of this deck, but I like the Black Salvo play because it can help me go for synchro plays because the situation I'm finding myself in a lot, if I'm not going for a fusion play right away, is I'll be like, okay, I got an edge on the field equipped with let's just say a, a claw, all right, in my main monster zone. Now I can normal summon, add, you know, spring out from the graveyard another cyber dark card, equip, you know, summon it, and go for a level seven synchro play. That's pretty nice. Um, so I like it as a two of, it's a good backup play. Some people don't like running it. Some people like running it. It's up to you, but you'll find yourself during the first couple turns, not going to your main monster zone, so it's pretty nice to have this as a backup play or being a main power play to do things. Or if you're losing, you can go Black Rose, normal summon, bring back Black Rose the field, there you go. Um, so yeah, there's different things you could do with Black Salvo, but I like him as a two of. You don't have to run him, but I like him. And the last monster we run is one Max C. Um, if you were taking this to a tournament at locals and trying to play against the meta per se, you may want to definitely tech in your Ghost Ashes, your Ghost Ogres, uh, a, a, your Dark Hole from your side deck into your main deck. So there's different things you can do there if you plan, I mean to say, to take this against the meta. But for the most part, you're going to still have trouble facing against the meta. But the thing is, the cool thing about this deck is people don't know what it does. So you're going to have that surprise advantage if they have never played against Cyber Darks or they've never played it and they don't know what they're doing, what you're doing. So you do have that advantage um, going into combat, I guess you could say. But one Max C, great card, didn't get banned. Uh, then we run your three field spell and one tail forming. Uh, though you can search out, mind you, the Cyber Dark Infernoi. Um, with Claw, by pitching Claw to the graveyard, adding this to hand. I like the one tail for me just for that little pinch of consistency. That's just me. Uh, one card I was thinking of running over terraforming, though, was this card right here. Um, it's a tech card that I've seen people run in the deck, and it does work, and I do like it, and I try to fit it in the deck. But it's si Dragon Buster Destruction of the Sword, because you, this is a dragon card, so you can get this engrave, normal summon one of your Cyber Dark machines, equip it, and now your opponent can't special summon from the extra deck. So it's a little stun card, and you can run it in the deck, but eh, I found that it was a little too gimmicky for my taste, but it does work, and you could try running one to two of it in the deck. So just something, a suggestion for you guys if you're wondering. Um, but yeah, you have three Cyber Inferno, very good, makes your, your Cyber Darks untargetable, you can bounce them back, um, there's a bunch of bunch of different things you can do honestly with this card. It's so 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 good um, But yeah, and one tear for me Not an amazing field spell like diagram, but a good field spell for this deck and something it really needed Next you run your three alert of darkness you all everything in your main deck is dark Except what max C I think is the only non dark monster. So three alert of darkness is a staple um, your one Cyber Dark Impact. This is searchable through Claw. You, I've seen people run double of this. You only need one. Uh, Overload Fusion and Future Fusion. If Future Fusion goes through by the dumping a lot of Cyber Darks to your graveyard, 
you usually will win. Future Fusion, I know, is slower nowadays. It's susceptible to a lot of removal, but <sighs> it's just searchable. It's pretty damn decent, honestly, in this deck as a one of, because it's not just because it's at one, but overall, it's just really good. And I like the Future Fusion in the deck. The Overload Fusion is good, mid to late game, after you've settled a bunch of Cyberdarks to the grave, and this is just good overall. But, um,. Yeah, it's up to you how you want to run, if you, which ones you want to run, but these are the three I run for going for the big fusion plays. Then I run two power duality. Now, I yes, I get the fact that you will be special summoning in this deck, but a lot of your time, like I said, you're going to be setting on your big cyber dark ships that are untargetable. And maybe you'll go through a black salvo play and then later down the road you go for your fusions once you've set up for them really. So, in between that, there's a lot of turns or a turn here and there where you can just activate the pod duality and be like, okay, search my deck for things I need, combo pieces, whatever the case may be. Uh, oh, I add a claw to my hand, pitch the claw, add a spell card to my hand for next turn. You know, you're thinning your deck out as you go here. Um, it's really nice as a two of. You don't have to run it. Uh, you could run other cards. Um, another good spell card you could run in the deck, which some people have run, and I was testing it out, and it did work, but it was a little eh, inconsistent, more than Future Fusion, was Refusion, because you could reborn your fusion monsters. So it's a nice little card to have, but I decided to run Pop Dualities instead for consistency, because the deck does need it still a little bit. Next up, we run Double Twin Twister, blow your opponent's back row away, you'll have card advantage, it's fine. Foolish Burial to set up your graveyard for whatever you need. Uh, if you don't have a claw or a um, cannon in hand, and, but you have Cyber Darks, you can pitch something to the grave, like one of those from your deck to your grave, normal summon, equip it, and then you could proceed to go from there. One Upstart Drop Goblin for consistency. Regeki. Uh, and that's all your spell cards. Just good generic cards. This works out very well though, especially with very clunky hands. Uh, next we run two Radiant Sum Storming Mirror Force. Storming Mirror Force is really good in this deck. It's non-targeting removal kind of, but the cool thing is if they're trying to run over, you know, something like this, when you have it equipped and it's like 24 attack, well, if they're trying to run it over, you can just be like Storming Mirror Force back back that to your hand or whatever and just kill them now. Uh, so it's really good. It's a good protection play, especially with cards that, yeah, they have easy job with removal, but it can come handy. It's a nice little trap to have on hand, I find, most of the time, uh, especially in this deck. Next, we run your Solemn Brigade, your Solemn Warning, and your Double Solemn Strike. Pretty straightforward. Good cards. You could run Lost Winds. It's up to you, but yeah. On to your extra deck now. Uh, give me a second. We got our one Skyla token. I love Skyla. So, yep. Yeah. Then we got our two new fusion monsters. Really, really good card. Uh, you don't need three. Two is all you need. Uh, you could run just one of it, but I like two because there's sometimes I randomly find myself going for two, and that's Cyber Dark Dragon. Usually you go for this. Sometimes you will go for this. You sometimes just need one, but sometimes you will make two. It just depends, man. That's all I can say about that. The one fusion you'll definitely need three of is definitely three Elder Entity Nist. You will need three Nist because it helps you pop things. Uh, I would say you definitely need either one or double Reflasia. Uh, Chimera Attack Reflasia because you can help you search for your fusions by sending this to the grave at the end of the turn. And you will need a five-headed god dragon. Or you can run Dragon Master Knight instead. You just need something with 5,000 attack. <laughs> so either one of these works. Um, but yeah, next up you run your Synchros. So we run our Black Room. Yeah, our Black Rose Moonlight Dragon, which is nice. Your Black Rose Dragon, Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. Uh, this I go for quite often. Ancient Fairy Dragon. Ancient Fairy Dragon, you'll find yourself going for quite often, honestly. It is really good in this deck, uh, to some degree. And then I run one level four Exceed Monster because sometimes you'll find that situation arising. So I did run the most versatile one, which is um, Castell the Sky Musketeer. So 
Yeah, you got your level sevens. You can run. Uh, I couldn't find off the top of my head any good, really. Um, I mean, if Black Silver was a level four, for Pete's sake, oh my gosh, you could go for things like BLs and whatnot, but you can't. But yeah, the deck overall, it works. It's a pretty good, solid deck. Uh, the new fusion helps out along with the old fusion. The new cards like Cannon really help out like Claw and Cannon and the Field Spell are really amazing. It really helps the deck out. Um, there's different variations you could run. You could run more of a stun variation, like I said, with Dragon Buster, Destruction Sword. It's up to you. But till next time, guys, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. Go Zane Truesdale. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Good luck dueling to all of you.